<laughs> okay guys, here's one more video. This is uh, collection two, uh, selection test A. If you were assigned that one, make sure you're on the right one. When the speaker in winter says, I collect books for the coming winter, what is her attitude toward the coming cold weather? Um, we never get the feeling that this is a really scary, um, horrible thing. Um, lots of positive things um, that are happening to get ready for the winter. Um, so uh, that really tells us the answer. It's positive, A, okay? Um, none of these negative words would fit the tone of the story, or, or of the poem, sorry. Okay, number two. In winter, what is one thing the speaker does to get ready for winter? So we have to go back to speaker, the speaker, not any of the other animals that she's comparing um, human activity to. So it said children take medicine. It said the animals, the squirrels gather nuts. Um, it says she, says I air my quilt. So if you go back and look at the poem, B is going to be your best choice. Okay. Number three, what does the speaker in winter collect? Um, again, it's the speaker. All, some of these other things were collected. Nuts were collected by the animals, but not by the speaker. So our best choice um, would be books. D. Got to look up our answers. What conclusion can you draw about the details in the three verses of winter? They all tell about winter storms? No. This is preparing for winter, not during the uh, height of winter. B. They all tell about the joys of winter? No. C. They all tell about preparing for winter? Yes. Um, they all tell about avoiding winter? Well, there's no avoiding winter, so C preparing for winter, all the things that the animals and the people do to prepare for winter. Okay, number five, what kind of poem is Forsythia? It is a concrete poem because it takes the shape of what it's talking about. It looks like a plant, it's about a plant. Okay, number six, Forsythia contains few details. Which statement most likely explains the sparseness of details? Um, it's not because the poet didn't finish the poem. Uh, because the shape of the poem provides the details. Well, perhaps, yes. We, when we look at it, we're like, oh, it's a plant. Okay, because we can tell the branches and, and things uh, from the way it's written. The poet has nothing to say about it? No. Or there's no word that rhymes with Forsythia. Mm, that's not why, okay? It, it's not even a rhyming poem. So um, B is going to be our best choice. Okay, number seven. Come on, number seven. Computer. Okay. Which adjective best describes Mary Ellen Solt's attitude toward Forsythia? That's the author. Um, disrespectful? No. Enthusiastic? Yes, because it sounds like it's exciting that spring is coming, and this Forsythia is announcing the coming of spring. So B looks pretty good. Appalled? No. Um, and awestruck? Maybe a little bit, but enthusiastic is a better word than awestruck. Okay. Number eight, to what method of communication does the speaker of Forsythia refer? Um, it has dots and dashes, and if you um, didn't know, now you do, that a telegram uses dots and dashes, so it would be A, okay? Number nine, how many syllables does a traditional Japanese haiku contain? Well, we've got to do some math here because it's five, seven, five. So 5 plus 7 is 12, plus another 5 is 17. So our answer is D. Okay. In the first of the three haiku, what does the speaker point out with happy surprise? It says, look, a mountain path. So it would be D. Number 11. In the three haiku, what time of year does the poet seem uh, most concerned? Um, well, they're all about springtime. So B. Okay. In the three haiku, how is the poet's attitude toward nature best described? Appreciative? Well, I would say yes. Uninterested? No, because if you're uninterested, why would you write three haiku about it? C, unobservant? No, because they notice the details of the spring, so no. Um, and hostile? Mm -mm. Okay, so A would be our best choice. When the frogs in winter burrow the mud, what are they doing? Burrow means digging holes. They're digging holes. B. Which sentence contains an infinitive? An infinitive is the word to with a verb. Okay? So we were looking for the word to. We have to prepare right here. And 
to the children right here. So which one has a verb? This one does, prepare, that's something you can do. So A is our infinitive, okay? 15, which of the following sentences contains an infinitive phrase? So we're looking for two with a verb. Two caves, caves isn't a verb. To collect books, hmm, yes. Collect is a verb. To spring, well, spring can be a verb, but here it's used as the season, to spring, looks forward to spring. So our one that's used as a verb is this one, to collect books, so B is our best choice, okay? All right, guys, that concludes um, collection two, selection test A, if you were assigned to that one, okay?